Hello and welcome to my six useful Excel formulas to use in day-to-day -day work. And the first formula on this list are the left, right, mid and find formulas. Now these can be used on their own or we can use them together to be able to extract information from a text string. So the first one we will actually look at is a combination of left and find. And we're going to firstly extract the last name from this email string. Now, the only reason we're going to do the last name first is just because it's slightly easier than being able to extract the first name, which as you'll see from these email addresses is actually in the middle of the email address. So the way the email is structured is it's surname followed by first name, followed by the last part of the email. So we'll extract the last name first, and then we'll move on to the first name. So to be able to extract the last name, we can use or we can combine the left and find formulas to be able to get that information. So we start off with equals left. We select our text that we're wanting to extract the information from. Now, if this was just a defined number of characters, let's say three, it would select the first three characters from that person's name. Obviously, the difficulty that we have here is that the second names or surnames are all different lengths. So we therefore need to add in the find formula as well to be able to alter the number of characters that our left function is returning. So let's go back to our formula. And this time where it says number of characters, we want to change that and we're gonna type in find. Now within these email addresses, you'll see that there's a full stop after the person's surname. So what we want to do is find the full stop. So in our quotation marks, we're going to put in full stop. We then need to select where we're looking. So again, select A2. And the start number is just asking where do you want to start from within this text string? And we want to start from one. And what that will do then is that will go and that will find where that full stop is within that string of text. And it will return the number at which that full stop falls. Now, if we were to leave that there, what would happen is this. So you can see that it returns the surname, but it also returns the full stop. So what we need to do is actually minus one character off there. And that way it will take off the full stop and it will always just give you the surname. So what we can do now is drag that down. And you can see that that has returned all the surnames from the email addresses in the left hand column. Now, the next step is to try and extract the first name from this text string. And this is probably, well it's not probably, it will be the most complex formula we run through today. And the whole idea of this formula is that we're going to try and find the difference in characters between the full stop as part of the email and the at symbol as part of the email. So I will try and explain this best I can as I go through, but I will include the formula within the description as well so that you can steal it and use it for yourself. So equals mid, because we're going in the middle of our text string or we're trying to find characters within the middle of our text string. So we want to go for the middle of A2 now the start number in this scenario is our full stop. So we're starting from our full stop because we're extracting from the middle of our text string. Now we can't enter the full stop in because it's looking for a number. So we have to do what we did when we were extracting the last name. So you want to use a find. It's going to be full stop again.
within A2, start number being 1. And what we want to do is, if you remember, we actually minus 1 when we were doing this formula for the surname. But this time, because we're wanting to start 1 after the full stop, we're actually going to plus 1. The next part then is to determine, as I said at the start of this, the difference in characters between the full stop and the at symbol. So to do that, we're going to do a find again. And this time we're looking for the at symbol. Within A2. And the start number will be 1. So that will give us a number within that text string for the at symbol. We want to then minus off the position of the full stop, and that will just leave us with the bit between the full stop and the at symbol, which in this case is our first name. So we want to minus off and find the full stop again, starting from the beginning. And on this one, we want to minus one because we want to start from just before the full stop. And that will return the first name from this text string. I appreciate you may need to watch that back again because it's quite a complex formula but it will allow you to extract the first names from emails if they're in the middle or more commonly the surname will be in the middle. So you do the exact same process, it would return the surname. And we can either drag that down. Your other option is if you just double click on this little box here, it will copy your formula all the way down to the next available space. So the next formula we have on this list is the concatenate formula. And this allows us to join two text strings together. So here you can see that we've now extracted the first name and the last name. And what we want to do is put them together. So to do that equals concatenate, select it below. Now, if we were to just select the first cell and the next cell and enter, it would leave us with the first name and last name together, but obviously there's no space in between. So what we can do, if we just go back to our formula, is once we've selected the first cell, if we just type in quotes, space, and again, close your quotation marks, comma, and then select the last name, that will add in a space between the text within our two cells. Close brackets, and it's now put the full name together with a space in the middle. Again, copy that down. Now, if you're anything like me, it will bother you that the full name or any name for that matter, is all lowercase. Which brings us on to our third formula on this list. So the third formula on our list is proper. So what proper does is it allows us to take a text string and capitalize the first letter of each word and the rest of the word will stay as lowercase. Just for reference, there is also a function called upper, which changes everything to capitals. And there's also a function called lower, which changes everything to lowercase. So what we can do is in front of our formula, if we type in proper, select our entire formula, you can see that it's changed the first letters of the first name and second name to capitals and we can copy that down. So a very quick and easy formula, but it does make life significantly easier if at any point you need to capitalize the first letter of any word within a text string. So formula number four on our list is the VLOOKUP. 
and something that you almost don't know you need until you've seen it. And once you've used it, I've known many people say, I don't know when I'd actually use that. And then you can come back to them two months later and they're using it in every single spreadsheet that they have going. So what the VLOOKUP allows us to do is to be able to populate a number of cells by creating a reference table. And the way that I've done that here is we're going to fill out the pay band for each of these people based upon their job band. So what you could do in theory is we have the information for the job banding and pay banding here. And you could go through and type each one in individually, which would take a significant amount of time. So all I would suggest doing is creating a reference table like I've done here. And then we can use that to be able to populate the pay band for each of these employees. So to do this formula, we do equals VLOOKUP. And the value that you're looking up here is the job band. So it would be manager. It then asks us where to look for the word manager. And the way that a VLOOKUP works, it will always look in the most left-hand column of the table that you have selected. So if we select this table here, that means it will look for the word manager in column J, because that is the most left-hand column of the table that we have selected. Comma to move to the next section of the formula, which is the column index number. So what this is saying is once I've found the word manager, how far across do you want me to go to return the relevant value? Now this is in relation to the table you've selected. So one of the most common mistakes I see here is that people put in column K. It actually wants a number. It does say column index number, but it is in relation to the table you've just selected. So because we want to return the pay band, it's going to be column two. Just type in two. And then in the range lookup, I would always recommend you type false. And all that does is it looks for an exact match rather than what Excel believes is close to a match, which is sometimes a little bit far-fetched. So if we enter that in, you'll see that it's brought the pay band back for manager. Now, what you need to do here is if if I drag this down now, the table that I've selected will also drag down. So what we need to do is lock our table array. So to do that, we select the part of the formula that we want to lock. And all we need to do is hit F4, which will put the dollar symbols into our formula. And it means that it will lock those particular cells. So now when I drag that down, you can see that it's locked in the table array, but it will move down the job band to the relevant row for each individual. So a super useful formula, that one. It saves people a lot of time rather than typing in an incredible amount of information. Always create a little reference table and use a VLOOKUP. Now the next formula on this list is a count if. Now a count if allows you to count based upon a specific criteria. So what I want to do or how I will demonstrate this is use a count if to show you the number of roles that we have within this organization. So what we will do is we'll do equals count if and then we will need to select the range, which is going to be column E, because this is where all the job bands are. And the criteria, because we want this against each of the job bandings, will be officer first, and then when I drag that down, it will go to coordinator, manager, senior manager, etc. So you can enter. And that's now saying that we have 24 officers within the organization. 
Let's say we can drag that down and it will give the number of each role. So we've got 24 officers, 15 coordinators, etc. Now the last formula that I'd like to show you is an if statement. So an if statement allows you to basically ask Excel a question and return a value depending on a set of criteria. So in this example, I'm going to use an eligible for an extra holiday day. And in this scenario, what we'll do is we'll say that if the employee has been here more than five years, they will get an extra day's holiday. So what we want to do is equals if, and this is where Excel asks what the test is. So we want to do is the year's service larger than or equal to five years? And then if that is correct, Excel wants to then know what will the value be if this is true? So we want to say, yes, they are eligible for the extra day. Or if it's incorrect, i.e. if the value is false, we want to select no. Close brackets, enter, and we can see that this person has been there five years or more, and therefore they are eligible for an extra holiday day. Drag that down, and as you can see, it will show whether each person has effectively worked there for five years or more, and therefore eligible for an extra holiday day. And that wraps up my six useful Excel formulas to be using in day-to-day -day work. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.